Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us this morning or this evening, if it's evening for you, and for attending today's webinar, How to Start Your Career in Business Analytics. I'm Natalie Sarestra Phil, Manage Manager of Recruitment. I'm Natalie Sarestra Phil, Manager of Recruitment and Admissions here at UBC Sauter School of Business for our postgraduate programs, and I will be your host for today's webinar. I'm going to start us off by giving you an overview of the Masters of Business Analytics program, and then our guest speaker, Whitney Friesen, Manager of MBAN Careers, will take the stage and speak to you about the Business Career Center and her experience in the student's journey towards career success and today's, in today's job market. So again, thanks for being here. Great turnout today. As we see here, uh, people from all over the world are logging in. Just to let you know, this webinar is going to be recorded. So um, if there's parts of it you missed today, you'll definitely be able to rewatch it and feel free to, um, to forward the recording over to your friends or people who you think might be interested in this information. So let's dive right in. Masters of Business Analytics, um, here on out I'm going to refer to that as the MBAN, is a one-of-a-kind program for anyone who wants to work with cutting-edge companies to interpret data and use data to make effective business decisions. Year over year, we're consistently seeing the interest and popularity of this field continuing to grow. I also wanted to add that at the end of the session, um, there will be a Q&A component. So if you have questions throughout the session, feel free to type those out and we will address them at the end of the session. This program is offered in the heart of Vancouver, which is also known as the Silicon Valley of the North, Canada's fastest growing metropolitan economy and home to a variety of major organizations, startups and firms. If you look at job board, the job boards will tell you that there's definitely no shortage of demand for people with business analytics credentials. In just 12 months, you can earn a master's degree from a top tier internationally recognized university. So who goes after a master's in business analytics? Someone who is looking for a program that bridges data science and business. Someone who's looking to solve complex problems in business using data someone who's looking to be challenged academically and who wants access to a rich and connected network and also to gain real life work experience in their field. Looking at the program, you'll notice a mix of statistics, data science, business, marketing, supply chain courses. Um, you'll also see that there's career development and one-on-one -on -one coaching that is interwoven throughout the program. That's probably a key differentiator in our program. It's, the it's all about the level of support, resources, and the guidance that you'll receive from our in-house experts and our external partnerships. In fact, you'll notice that in the first nine months of the programs, there's it's all about coursework and career readiness, and then then you're actually placed into an analytics consulting internship, internship where you'll get real life experience and actually get to apply what you've learned in the program to solve real life problems and cases. Here are a few of the partnerships that we have. And here's some information on our BCC. Whitney will be speaking on this shortly, um, but you'll see here, that through our BCC, you actually get a variety of career services that you'll have access to for a lifetime. Those services look like one-on-one -on -one coaching and just general resources that will help you grow. So whether it's getting you uh, more career ready by building your resume, strengthening your interviewing skills, your, your networking, uh, developing your brand, or if you're simply looking for mentorship opportunities, you'll have access to all this and more. As you can see here by some of these numbers, our employment rate post program completion is quite strong. 
uh, generally within three months of completing the program, over 90% of our students are gainfully employed. And they're working within a variety of different industries. They're working in job titles such as product or program managers, financial analysts, risk associates, data analyst, management consultant, and more for some big names out there, and some, some Fortune 500 companies. There's a mix in the classroom as well. So people coming from all over the world, uh, people from different backgrounds, different degrees, uh, different age ranges as well. You'll also see that the average work experience is about 3.6 years. However, work experience is not a requirement to apply to the program. Looking at some of the admissions requirements, at UBC, we do have a holistic way of looking at things. So although we consider things like your GPA, we look at your GRE or your GMAT scores, um, this is after all an academically and, and uh, rigorous and, and competitive program. So we do go after a, a high caliber of student. And um, with regards to your English proficiency tests, this is really just intended for people who studied um, at a university institution where English was not the primary language of instruction. So if you studied at a university where the primary language of instruction was English, you were not required to take English proficiency um, examinations such as the TOEFL, IELTS, and a full list of those exams are, are listed on our website for you to access. We also request uh, at least two references. Uh, as part of your application, there's some written essays, there's a 90 second video that you'll be asked to submit as well. And really, this is just your opportunity to show us your personality, your communication skills, and talk to us about your why for wanting to join the course. An, an interview is also part of the admissions requirement. Now, the interview can be done in person if you're in the neighborhood, or we can also do it um, via Skype or any other um, video conferencing tool. If you're interested in the program, we really encourage you to apply early on. This just gives you access to a larger pool of admission scholarship funds, and you'll receive ongoing communications from our teams on the status of your applications. You'll get guidance on how to prepare for interviews and make your application stand out. You'll also get information on upcoming events and future info sessions. So we encourage you to start your application early on. And now, without further ado, I'd like to turn things over to our guest today, Whitney Friesen, manager of MBAN Careers. Whitney has nearly a decade of experience in human resources, event management, volunteer engagement, campus recruitment, and career advising working within public practice and not-for-profit industries. Graduating from a Bachelor of Business Administration with a concentration in HR, her career has been centered around developing business leaders in multiple disciplines. After spending over three years as an HR advisor at Smith LLP, she joined the Business Career Center at UBC Sauter in early 2019 as an MBAN career manager. In her role, she is responsible for developing and facilitating career programming for MBAN candidates and is the main point of contact for all aspects of the professional development journey. Whitney's focus is helping students determine, define, and achieve their career goals through one-on-one -on -one coaching and facilitation of the career development course. She thoroughly enjoys empowering students to lead with their strengths and likes watching students grow into professionals. In her spare time, she loves to travel the world, having already visited 36 countries on six continents. When she isn't planning her next adventure, she, she can be found playing pub trivia, practicing yoga, or enjoying the great outdoors. Thanks, Whitney, for joining us today. Over to you. Oh. Well, thank you, Natalie. That was quite the introduction. Um, and as, I, as you guys can see on the screen right now, I've put up a few photos to just give you a little glimpse into uh, some of those things that I mentioned. I also showcase under my name there, you're going to see five words, communication, responsibility, empathy, woo, and positivity. 
Those might not make a lot of sense to you, but they may start to make more sense if you do decide to join our MBAN program because we do an assessment with you near the beginning of the year where we get you to do what's called the strengths finder. And I just put those up there because those happen to be my top five strengths. And it's something that I've really been able to leverage in my role here at the Career Center. And I'm really excited to show you how you can also leverage your strengths to find the career that's going to be the most meaningful for you. So now I'm gonna dive in a little bit more into uh, about our career programming and ultimately how you guys can get a job in business analytics once you're finished the MBAN program. So I'm gonna go over our career services, like I said, how to get a job in business analytics. I'm gonna tell you about a couple of our recent MBAN success stories and finally wrap up with some job statistics. So our career center. Uh, we believe students have unlimited potential. We exist to offer personalized and transformational experiences that will give students the confidence to fulfill their personal and professional goals. It's really about empowerment and creating a, a process that will allow you to take this outside of our school and into your future so that not only can you get a job with our support, but you're gonna be able to set yourself up for success lifelong as well. We do this through a variety of things that Natalie already touched on. One of them is our career development course, which is a class that's part of your curriculum that you will attend and participate in throughout the course of the nine months of, of curriculum. You also have access to me as your personal coach. So you're welcome to come and see me as often as you like for one-on-one -on -one coaching. And this can be on a wide range of topics from resume prep, interview prep, um, all the way to, I feel stuck and I don't know what to do next. We can explore anything that you want to talk about. We also provide exclusive events to the MBANs to meet alumni, to meet employers, and we put on workshops on topics that you'll be interested in, as well as a suite of very exclusive resources that are only available to our UBC Sauter students. So I've put up on the screen here a model for you. This is what we call our career readiness model. And um, it, there's quite a lot here, so I'm not gonna get into all of it today, but I just wanted to show you that this is kind of the types of things that we talk about in our career development course. And today I'd like to talk about one because I think it's a key differentiator for UBC, and that's emotional intelligence. So what is emotional intelligence? Well, simply put, it's how well individuals identify and manage their own emotions and react to the emotions of others. So the reason why we wanna build this is because emotional intelligence provides, you know, the ability for you to identify and manage your own emotions. It's the ability to understand how those emotions can shape your thoughts and actions. So you have more control over your behavior and you can develop the skills to manage yourself more effectively. Becoming more emotionally conscious allows us to grow and gain a deeper understanding of who we are, enabling us to communicate better with others and build stronger relationships. So why does EQ matter? Well, <laughs> EQ, people with high EQ actually earn about $29,000 more per year. So there is a direct correlation between your leadership success and your earning potential and your EQ. It allows you to build better relationships, manage difficult emotions, increase creativity and innovation, lead others effectively, and it's correlated to career success and compensation. We know that having great leaders at every level of the business is key to attracting and retaining talent. And emotional intelligence is the most important source of competitive advantage in business today. I've got a slide here with some stats for you and I wanted to draw your attention to 58% um, there. EQ is responsible for 58% of your job performance. So it's really important to uh, learn about your own EQ and figure out ways that you can develop it because the exciting thing about about EQ is that it is not fixed. It's not like IQ where that's just how you are. EQ is something that can grow throughout your full career journey. And as you gain wisdom from your experiences and 
develop and work on the different competencies, you will become more emotionally intelligent. So what we do in our program is we actually give you an assessment. It's called the Emotional Capital Report, and it's uh, provided through Roche Martin. And it is a very rigorous um, assessment that will give you an overall EQ score, but also give you an individual score for each of the 10 EQ competencies. We get into a lot more detail about this in the program, but uh, this is a great tool that can use to help you work on the areas of weakness that you may want to build on or take your strengths to the next level. So moving on to how to get a job in business analytics. Part of the reason that I brought up EQ is because it is tied to one of the key ways that we uh, in teach you how to get a job. So I draw you to this uh, pyramid here. This is an example of how employers look for us versus how we look for them. Traditionally, people start at the top of the pyramid. They go on job boards and job postings and apply for jobs online. But that's not how employers look for people. They start at the bottom of the pyramid. So one of the big things that we teach at the BCC is how to kind of transform your hiring process and get you to be focusing on the areas that employers are actually um, doing the hiring. And a big part of that is networking and word of mouth. Now, networking is actually part of one of the EQ competencies that I mentioned, which is relationship building. So that's part of why we want to teach you about EQ, because that actually translates to your ability to get a job in the North American workforce. 78% of recruiters find their best quality candidates through referrals. And it's hard to get a referral if you don't have a network or, a connection, or connections with employers. So that's a big part of our program and what we teach you to do. And we also provide connections for you. Here at the BCC, we have a big network. We know that you're often coming from different, different parts of the world where you, you may have connections there, but you don't have connections locally. So we can connect you to employers that are hiring now. We can help you to build that network for yourself so that you'll be able to go out there and get the jobs that you want. We do that in a variety of ways. We have networking events, like I mentioned earlier. We put on company information sessions where different organizations come to campus and do some recruiting as well. We bring in guest speakers and panelists that can help you start to make connections. And we teach you about informational interviews, how you can reach out to people and start your connections on your own. I wanted to give you a couple of examples of our recent MBAN graduates who have been very successful at using networking to land them their, their first job post MBAN. So the first is Barris. He attended our MBAN employer networking event back in April and he had a very unique approach. Whereas the majority of students decided to see as many different employers as possible, Barris decided to go with quality over quantity. And he spent the entire night, two hours of networking, talking to two employers because he was really focused on what he wanted to do. Turns out that one of those two employers actually ended up offering him a job. Now, it didn't happen immediately that night. He had to do some of his own follow-up he had to continue to keep that connection warm, apply for the, op, the, the job that was available. But ultimately, the networking that started that evening is what landed him his first job post MBAN at KPMG Lighthouse here in Vancouver as a data scientist. Now, Kinjal, on the other hand, had a completely different strategy. His success didn't come from a networking event. It was pretty untraditional. He was having no success with applications. He really wanted to work for EA and applied online, but wasn't hearing back. And honestly, that's tough. And that happens to a lot of students. But he remembered what we learned in class and he decided to check LinkedIn to see if he could find someone that worked in the organization. He was able to connect with their manager of analytics, who also happened to be a UBC Sauter alumni, and they started a conversation and were able to develop a good relationship and that individual offered to refer him for the job. The day after he made that referral, 
the recruiter called him and the interview process started. Now, of course, he had to do some of his own work in the interview process, but ultimately that referral led him to an offer at Electronic Arts as a business analyst, and he started working there on Monday. So those are just a couple of examples of how our students have used relationship building and their emotional intelligence to land them jobs post MBAN in really reputable and exciting companies. So I hope that you will incorporate this into your own job search, whether you decide to come to our program or not. Now, I know a lot of you are probably curious about where our students have landed and uh, what type of uh, roles they've had. I don't have the 2019 data available yet as our students are actually just finishing their internship over the next couple of weeks. So we should have that data later in the fall, but I can show you the MBAN 2018 hiring data, which we do have. So that class had 35 total students and we ended up with 36 job offers and 130 total interviews. So as you can see, one interview doesn't always equal a job offer. There's often a lot of interviews that go into getting that final job, but um, it is a work in progress. We also wanted to show you a little bit about where our students go. Now, the majority of the students do decide to stay in Vancouver. Vancouver is a pretty beautiful place and a lot of them fall in love when they get here. But many of our students also ended up going east because Toronto and Montreal have a great network of jobs as well. And they were able to land jobs in Eastern Canada or Central Canada, as well as we've had students who've gone to China. Now from our current 2019 cohort, we've already had students who have landed jobs in Calgary, Toronto, Singapore, and of course, Vancouver. Now to give you just a little uh, background on some of the areas of employment, Natalie shared some job titles with you. Uh, the major areas of employment are those yellow uh, categories you can see on your screen. So 71% of our total hires from 2018 went into consulting, consumer products and services, and technology. We also had students land jobs in financial services, media and entertainment, and healthcare, energy, utilities, oil, and gas. And I did see a question uh, earlier about which uh, companies have employed MBAN graduates. And so I've put some, uh, these are not, this is not an exhaustive list, but this is some a sample of the employers that have hired MBANs over the past couple of years. So you can see a lot of, um, like Natalie mentioned, you know, Fortune 500 companies, as well as some really wonderful local companies that provide really amazing career opportunities as well. So there's a wide variety of options out there and employers in the local market are really excited about MBAN graduates. There's a lot of interest. Okay, so that brings me to the end of my formal presentation. Thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to listen, and I hope that you will send us your questions. Natalie and I are both here available to take those, and so we'll just wait for those to come in, and otherwise we will, we will hopefully see you again soon. Perfect. Thank you so much for that, Whitney. I just wanted to quickly add before we dive into the Q&A portion, that if you have in general or in future, if you have any questions about the program, you can definitely get in touch with our general line. You can contact, contact us at mban at solder.ubc.ca or you can get in touch with me directly. Um, here's my email on screen. Email is probably the best way to get in touch with me. And um, for anyone who's local or who plans to be in Vancouver at the end of September, make sure you come by uh, to our MBAN kickoff event, which is essentially gonna be um, a, a soiree and, and there'll be a few different components to the evening. There's gonna be an info session component. You'll get to experience a sample lecture from one of our reputable professors here. And um, you'll also uh, get to experience a panel of alumni and current students. So you get to hear about the experience um, straight from the horse's mouth and um, and see what their experience was like from the program and, and where they're at today and really how it's helped them in their journey. 
Uh, so thanks everyone for uh, logging on and, and being in attendance today. And now let's open things over to the, let's have a look here at some of the questions that have come in. Um, so one of the questions, the first question that I see here is about um, where the, the grads have landed from the program and, and Whitney just kind of spoke to that. So some of the organizations that some of our grads have landed in are some of the major banks here that we have. So RBC, CIBC, if you're into tech, electronic arts, um, other big names such as uh, KPMG, um, Smith and Associates, and, and so forth. Uh, you can also see that detailed list on our on our website too. Let's get into the next um, question. It's around GPA requirements and if you fall slightly below below the GPA. So when it comes to GPA, we really look at the last two years of your um, bachelor degree. So we look at that in conjunction with a variety of pieces of information. That one piece isn't the be-all end-all as we are a holistic program. Uh, so although we look at a GPA of around 77% average, we also take into consideration your GRE or your GMAT results. So you can take either of those two. Um, it's not required for you to take both. We do have a minimum requirement there, but there's also a competitive requirement, which we really encourage you to reach for because um, you know it is an academically rigorous program and we kind of consider it a social responsibility on our part to ensure that you're able to keep up with the academic rigor of the program and really the best way to do that is through those standardized um, examinations. Um, we have questions about uh, scholarships. So yes, um, there's a few different ways to tap into the scholarship opportunities. The first way is we offer admission scholarships. So essentially that's through your application and it's assessed through academic merit as well as merit in, in terms of your, your work experience, your, your profile. So those, those uh, scholarships can range anywhere between $2,000 and $30,000 on average. So um, there's the admissions route that you can definitely take. And there's also a variety of different um, scholarship applications that you can apply for on our website. If you simply type into Google Sauter scholarships, you can see which types of scholarships you're eligible for because we do have regional scholarships and we have scholarships with um, for people of different specialties and backgrounds as well. So definitely take some time to familiarize yourself with the scholarship page on our website. Um, I do have uh, some uh, questions here with regards to um, technical experience and if that's a requirement for the course. So although um, work experience is not a requirement for the program, showing that you have some type of experience with um, data and, and technical courses it is definitely an add value if you can demonstrate that in the past you've taken courses uh, in advanced math statistics any type of computer science related courses will really help support you for the program and set you up for success um, some of the programming languages that you can familiarize yourself with that would help are, are things like Python and R. Um, for all of those who do receive acceptance into the program, they actually get access to a, a portal which they can log into for resources and materials that can help set them up for success for the program start at the end of August. Um, so yes, these resources are definitely there. Um, our student experience team is really helpful in making sure that the student feels comfortable and at ease before the commencement of class. And um, as a result, those, those resources are quite um, are rich for them to access. And if you don't mind, Natalie, I'll just jump in there as well. 
Um, I saw that that particular question also was, was mentioning a background in marketing and HR. And whereas that's maybe not the, the, the typical background that a student would have, we did have someone this past year that had an HR background, as well as quite a few years of experience in HR. And their ultimate goal was to get into HR analytics, where the degree, the MBAN degree really does blend nicely with that. So it kind of depends as well, like what, what your goals are post program. And if you're planning to kind of combine those together, that can be um, an advantage for you as well. So don't feel like because you have a specific background in something unique that it, it holds you back. We've had students with philosophy degrees, things that are very non-technical, um, but have you know made the switch and made the transition into the MBAN. Thanks for that, Whitney. And exactly as Whitney said, we really, embrace having that variety in the classroom. It, it's really what makes the classroom experience pleasant and informative for everyone. We have a question here around um, an international student who went to a university in the US, if, and they're wondering if they're still required to take the English proficiency examination. And uh, so to answer that question, if you studied at, a, at an institution where the primary language was English, which I would assume would be the case in the US, then you were not required to take an English proficiency test. I have another question here on what the, the video essay is like. The video essay, it's a 90 second video that you would submit. You would be, you would be prompted on, on what the question is. So if you want, you could do um, hundreds of takes until you feel comfortable submitting that video. Uh, essentially, it's a, it's a YouTube or a Vimeo link that you would submit and um, you would be given a, a question to answer. And really that's just, again, part of your application process. It's a means to provide the admissions committee with a feel of you know, your personality, your why and your motivation for, for wanting to enroll in the program. And we're not expecting um, for you to ha be, uh, have a, a movie director type background. Um, we, we, we understand that you know, not everyone has those advanced uh, film uh, editing and producing skills. So um, we're not expecting a, a James Cameron type production. So not to worry about that. <laughs> okay, great. Uh, we do have um, an experience. Uh, 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 we have a question on uh, an international student's likelihood of um, gaining employment here uh, in comparison to a domestic student. That's a great question. Um, to be completely honest, Canada, we are a, a highly multicultural country, Vancouver uh, as well, and we have not um, seen uh, be, how being an international student has negatively impacted the propensity towards getting a job. Um, we actually really value here having uh, someone coming in with an international scope and an international lens. And as a result of that, um, in our experience, the Canadian government has been quite generous with administering uh, work permits and work visas. So um, yeah, if, if that's a concern, I, I wouldn't think about that too much. Yeah, and I can, Whitney can, add I to can that agree as, well. <laughs> as, as being on both sides here as a recruiter, um, hiring students and uh, experienced workers. Um, I've definitely been on the hiring end and, and that was never looked at as a detractor for us in the hiring process, as well as now on the career advising side and looking at my student success, um, it does not appear to be a barrier. Our students are, are landing quickly and in, in great roles in really exciting companies. And so, and the majority of our students do want and choose to stay in Canada post MBAN. Some do decide to go to different countries, maybe back to the country that they were living in prior or to a new country, but um, it's completely possible and, and easy enough to get a job here in Canada once you finish the program. Thanks, Whitney, that's great. I see a question here on whether there's a preference between the GRE or the GMAT. 
Um, and really what my guidance there would be is that, first of all, no, we don't have a preference. Either or is fine. You're not required to take both. And I would encourage you to go with the, the, um, the exam that you think you would do best in. So if you think you'd do better in the GRE, go with that one. If you think you'd do better in the GMAT because it's more in line with your, your strengths and your skills, go for that one. Um, regardless, do some research on both of those exams and see which one resonates more with you. Great, so I do see um, a question here on someone who has uh, work experience in management consulting and they're, they have some questions about how they should market themselves and um, if they have a strong enough academic background to work in this field. So that's a great question. So to answer that, having some type of work experience is definitely a nice to have, especially in management consulting, where you're having to support organizations in making decisions that will help benefit them, whether it's from an ROI standpoint or from increasing efficiency standpoint, uh, chances are that if you've worked in management consulting, you have gained this insight, which is uh, an added value and a nice to have. So, so kudos on that background. Um, in terms of not having an academic background in that area, um, if you can demonstrate in some way that you've taken some more technical courses, whether it was through your undergrad or outside of your undergrad, that would be something that would be very valuable. And um, like, like Whitney said very well herself, um, people come from various backgrounds in the role. And um, if your specialty is in management consulting, and if you could add this competitive advantage of having that insight into data analytics and, and, and data science and um, that would really help support your role. And I think those two things would go very well hand in hand with each other. And uh, we would embrace that type of background here. Yeah, and, and to go along with that, a big part of getting into the field of management consulting is actually the interview process. It, it is competitive and there are a lot of people that want to work in that field. And so that's why uh, here at, in part of our program is is case study preparation and we have mentorship programs that will help you prepare for the case interviews as well as it's also ingrained into our career programming so you're able to really prepare yourself for that interview process and really set yourself up to do well in those interviews as well as meet companies when they come on campus so that you can decide what company might align best with your goals might be more open to the type of background that you have Thanks for that, Whitney. Um, so someone wants a bit more insight and information on our internship opportunities. So there's a few different ways our internships uh, work here. Like I said, it's the last three, three to four months of the program is the, an inter the internship component. It's the last three or four months. And, and um, this could go uh, one of a few different ways. So because UBC has such strong partnerships with organizations, um, both locally and externally, we would set you up with that internship opportunity. So you would go into um, that organization, you know, just like you would have like a regular nine to five or perhaps even longer than that on some days, and you would be working there as an employee. That's one way. Uh, UBC also has a center of operational excellence that we call it the COE for short. And here we have world-renowned uh, researchers and professors who actually are consultants within organizations. So you would be working uh, either one-on-one -on -one or, or one and one professor to, to two students maybe, and you would be working on a real-life consultative project with them where you would be um, co-consulting with them. So you get that hands-on expertise and that experience from our in-house um, uh, experts. Those are the key ways that you would get those, uh, those placement opportunities. And, um, and yeah, the, the, the range of industries and um, the, the, the organizations that are involved change every year. And we, we mainly do that to, you know, have more um, diversity in the experience that the student has. And in some cases, um, 
in most cases, we, we make those placements. And in some cases, you're expected to apply for those opportunities as well and, and go on those interviews. Regardless, it's a great opportunity for you to practice your interview skills. And that's, of course, alongside the support of the Business Career Center. And also just wanted to make sure that this was clear. The internship is paid. So in case that was something that you were concerned about, um, you will be earning a salary for that period of time as well. Thanks for adding that. That's a that's a big uh, added value and a big bonus. So. Exactly. <laughs> we, we know school's expensive, so you can start paying it off real quick. <laughs> yeah. um, great. So we have another um, course, uh, a question, excuse me, um, around is it possible to specialize in different areas and uh, are there tracks and electives that can be taken? So um, the, the, the MBAN curriculum is a standardized curriculum, which means that your, the courses that you take are prescribed by us. Um, as, as UBC is an, uh, an academic institution, we have the student's best interest at heart. We strongly believe that the set curriculum that we have is, is important and valuable to set everyone up for success equally in the workforce. And as a result of that, our, our curriculum is standardized as well. So there are no, um, there are no electives and the courses are set. Um, okay, great. Um, so the, we have a question here about someone who does not have a business background and are wondering if it's still okay to apply for the MBAN Masters. Um, the MBAN is the bridge between business and data science. A lot of people come into the program with different bachelors and different backgrounds. So whether you have a background in, in psychology or computer science or any kind of humanities or even engineering background, uh, we embrace uh, that, that variety that comes. So if you don't have a business background, I actually think this would be an awesome program for you because it would give you insight into the key business fundamentals that would help support you. So you get insight into uh, marketing, business, economics, statistics, um, really any subject that is business related if you feel like you don't have that business background and you're more of a hard skills person, you've got the more technical um, analytical skills, uh, this is a great program for, for people especially like that because it helps fill in those gaps there. Yeah, and to kind of add to that, you know, based on the background that you have, you'll, you'll find that you'll land in either more technical or more business related uh, jobs post program. So, you know, we've seen everything from the highly technical going into, you know, data scientists, data engineering positions post MBAN. But then again, like we mentioned, a lot of business analysts. So maybe students that have more of that business minded focus will end more up in those type of jobs, whereas those that are more drawn to the technical side will land in different jobs. So there's a wide variety of things you can do with the MBAN after graduation. And so that's why the different backgrounds can really be an advantage. And that's actually what makes you unique. And that story is what's really attractive to employers. Thank you, Whitney. So we have a, um, we have a question around deadlines. So we do have different deadlines for our domestic students uh, versus our international students just to ensure that our international um, students that we very embrace have enough time to apply for um, student visas and, and any kind of visa that they would require to leave and, and study abroad. We have um, set the deadline to be March 17th in 2020 for our international students. It's about a month later for our domestic students. Um, so yes, if you need support on um, visa information, again, our, our website has some great resources for that. Uh, because we, we do enjoy receiving our, our international students, um, we're, we're mindful of the steps required to, to make that transition. So we have those resources to support you as well.
Okay, um, so we do have uh, a question around an application waiver. And um, so when we're talking about an application waiver, um, this really happens case by case. Um, because again, it is a, a rigorous program and it's a competitive program and, and we look for you know, a high caliber of individuals to, to attend the cohort. We want to make sure that um, you know, you're, you're just able to keep up with the, with the program from a variety of different lenses, whether it's from a, a cultural fit standpoint and fitting with the values of UBC and being able to, you know, keep up with the program requirements. Um, this is why we, we would evaluate this on a case by case basis. Okay, wonderful. So that's looking like all the questions we have for today. Again, I want to say thank you so much for attending and for listening and your questions, your very valuable and insightful questions. Again, this recording will be available to all you in attendance. So feel free to catch certain pieces of it again if, if there's a piece that you missed or if you think you know someone who would be interested in receiving this information, you can definitely forward the recording over to them as well or get in touch with me directly if you have any questions. I'm happy to um, answer your questions by email or even jump on a call with you if you're international or, or meet with you locally if, you're, if you happen to be in Vancouver. Again, thank you so much for, for your time and have a wonderful rest of your Wednesday. Uh, good morning and, and good night to some of you. Have a wonderful week. Take care.